So we continue on with the public ministry, soul winning. And this week we're going to pick up on number 14 and get soul winning from soul winning passage, plain and simple. And Romans 10, 14. Dealing with a lost person. Going step by step. And we went through Romans 10, 9 to 13 last time. And we're picking up in Romans 10, 14. And in the midst of dealing with a lost man, the Bible concludes Romans 10 with going out and doing it. The reason. So Romans 10, 14. How then shall they, those that are lost, call on him, Jesus, in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him, Jesus, whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? So Romans 10, 14. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You got to call upon God to be saved through Jesus Christ. Have never believed on Jesus for salvation before. There's no getting re-saved. There's no getting born again and again and again. The message is for unbelievers. And for the unbelievers, there has to be believers that go out and preach. One of the top five ways to kill a church within time is to have no public ministry, no public ministry, no soul winning, no evangelism in the church. I mean, a church will go so far as, okay, this church will be built upon our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. When the facts are today, the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren are leaving the churches. And there are churches today where the people are sitting, are elderly, are old. And once they die off, the church begins to die off. But our source of these videos is not to grow a church. But that will kill a church. And how are they going to hear? Today we live in an age where marriages and funerals do not happen in a church. Lesser times will there be a Bible-believing preacher or a man that will stand up or a woman that will give an eulogy about Jesus. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but far and few between. And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? They, the unbelievers, they've got to hear. I don't want to offend them. And yet we're going to look at a passage the Bible says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Who cares if it offends? They're not going to hear it on the radio. Probably on the radio there's probably 1% chance. That the Bible gospel message will be told. Less chance for a television ministry. People are not going to advertise their products and their goods on a media center that promotes the Bible, God, and Jesus Christ. You can't sell booze, you can't sell junk and sin. If there's a radio program, is there a program about the Bible? In Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They've got to hear. And it's got to come from the mouth of a believer. In order to believe, they must hear the gospel. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Here comes a soul winner. Here comes the public ministry person. Here comes you that are saved. 
Here comes the saved Christian, all Christians, Mark 16, 15. In Mark chapter 16, 15. And this command is not to preachers and Sunday school teachers and missionaries and evangelists. This is a call to all born again Bible believing Christians. He that believeth, that's me. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and saved? That's you. He that believeth, that summarizes it. In the earshot of these videos, or mp4 however you're listening into your ears if you have believed in the lord jesus christ he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved baptism last but he that believeth not shall be damned so that is the result of preaching they're either going to believe and be baptized, or they're going to be damned by not believing. But look at verse 15. I wanted to show you 16 because we're all out to get people saved. We're all about telling them about Jesus. That's the purpose. But nothing can happen with belief. Nothing can happen with disbelief. Of verse 16 as John 3.36 says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. He that believeth not the Son has not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abiding upon him will be. The two results of any public ministry are either going to believe or they're not going to believe. But you need verse 15. And what is verse 15? And he says unto them, Go ye in all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. That is commission. And when we run back to Romans chapter 10. And what we studied last week. Verse 8 and 9. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. In your mouth. It's a word of faith. Which we preach. Oh, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. How do you confess with the mouth? You preach the gospel. The very same gospel that you got saved by. And if you preach the gospel, you become a preacher of the gospel. Oh, I'm a woman. I can't do that. See, you see how churches have messed it up. A woman is not to... Speak in the church, she's not to assert the authority over a man. She's not to be a pastor of a church or a television or a radio ministry. But she can go out and tell people about Jesus. She can tell them about the gospel. And usually the first reaction usually is when you do something like that, you will eventually hear within time, don't preach to me. I've heard that quite a few times in my life. Well, where did they get that from? Mark 16, 15. And when you got a woman out there and she's telling people about the gospel, she's not a preacher. She's not in charge of men. All right, have her go to women, have her go to children and tell them the gospel. There's no excuse. And it's not just for the pastor, evangelist, or missionary. It's for us Christians. For all Christians, all Christians are called to preach the gospel. And ought not to be coerced by your church and by your pastor. You know, we're going to, you know, oh, we only had many people come out this week. You know, you got to come out and do this. We got to sign up sheets. We got this and that. Come on up. That's, if you got to be coerced to do it, you're not giving from the heart. You're giving grungily. And the Bible says that Corinthians, God don't want it. You are commanded to preach the gospel to every creature, and yet free will says, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But don't cry, baby, when you lose rewards. Don't cry, baby, when you got wood, hay, or stubble, no gold, silver, precious stone. And if a Christian says he's not a preacher, he's lying. Paul was not a preacher. He was not a pastor of a church. He was a missionary. 
We're going to look at Lord willing next week, I believe. We're going to look at Philip. He's not a preacher. He's not a, a pastor. And yet he's going to witness to the Ethiopian eunuch, the gospel. How else are they going to hurt here, the Bible says, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? If you don't go and tell them about the gospel, how are they going to know? Church? How many of those, how many of those wicked people out in the world go to church? How many people do, oh, I want to go to church to hear the gospel. And how many would, okay, wake up in the morning, I think I should go to church today and do God's service. How many are going to say, oh, i got to find a Bible-believing church where they're going to have the truth and no religion and no Satan? you got to go out to them because they're not going to come in. Matter of fact, nowhere in the scripture does it say to bring the lost people to church. It says you go out and tell them. You go out and witness. We got this thing where everybody's welcome in the church, so half the church is saved, half the church is lost, and then you wonder why it's a worldly mess today. Because the half that are lost probably the ones that are giving more money to God because they think the money is going to give them good with God, and they start leaving because you're going to start getting biblical. Oh no, we're losing money. We're going to have to start getting more worldly and bring the worldly money in. That's not what it's about. It's not come join my church, come visit my church. Let me tell you about Jesus. And during this time of soul winning, during this time of public witness, there ought to be no church, your church, mentioned at all. Unless that person gets saved, that person wants to do right, he wants to do the next thing, baptism, he wants to grow, he wants to study from his Bible, and only after he has received Christ as his Savior, Okay, now let me tell you, where do you live? All right, let me find a Bible-believing church in your area. It may not even be your church. Some people get upset. All right, you witness to them. They receive Christ as your Savior. Oh, where are you from? I'm from Tennessee. Oh, you can't come to our church? You live way out there? I've dealt with men in prison. And when you're dealing with the prison ministry, there's not very much of a church you can send them to. Stop relying on the church to witness the lost people and get out there with your mouth and your lips and your hands and your feet and get the gospel out. Church, 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 church. And they be in church, church, church. I'm telling you, 95% of the churches today are rotten. Go read Revelation 3 and see what I what mean. So verse 15 of Romans 10. I'm not saying not go to church, but you got to find a good church. But when you deal with a lost man, it is not about church. It's about Jesus. How shall they preach? Who? Except they be sent. Well, I'm not called to preach. God's never sent me. I'm not called out to the missionary field. I've not been called to evangelism. Going all the world and preach the gospel is a calling to God. I mean, from God to you, Christian. You have been called. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Okay. So Jesus sends us out, Mark 16, 15, go. And you don't have to go on the other side of the world. Now, the beginning of my roots, I come from Connecticut. I was saved in Waterford, Connecticut, if you know the area. My church was in Falkata. We went around in the neighborhoods of Falkata. We went to a, uh, a Crystal Mall, and we got in trouble for pet tracks out there, but that's where we went. I went to my father's house in New London and preached to him. Went to Ledger. Went knocking on doors in Ledger. We moved as a family to Norwich. I went. 
I, I would assume we did three quarters of the houses of Norwich with a gospel track. Good news, newspaper. Some way, some harm, knocking or just leaving a track in a door now. And then we went out and we stood on the, uh, in the uh, Main Street, Norwich, just holding signs. And my son over there passing out gospel tracts to people that are walking by. Then we moved over to NFA. And we just held signs there when the students came out. And got very few gospel tracts out. Then I came down to Florida. I was down here in Port Orange. And we would hold signs on the street. I would hold signs out in front of the church. I'd say Ridgewood, I think. I get, I get those roads mixed up. But there I am. We moved down to Ormond Beach, and we went down to Ocean Walk, Daytona Beach, and sat on the sidewalk there and passed out gospel tracks, held signs, got opportunity to preach. We went to the to the Bikers Week, and then we would go to Daytona 500. We go in front of the mall. We pass out gospel tracks there. I would preach. Then we started getting our own ministry. We went down to. We started down the, the Daytona Beach Farmers Market. Only down the road from where we are. We've been there for four years. We preach the gospel. We get very few gospel tracks out, but we do. Four years they've been hearing the gospel. I can walk up there and they can start quoting the scriptures. And then we move to the, the, the flea market in Port Orange where we just set up a table and we got gospel tracks. We got books. We got all kinds of supplies for Christians and for non-Christians. And I got people that come to me, ask me questions about ministry. And we go to the Daytona 500. We go to the Bikers Week. We've gone in, even into the, I don't know what they call it, the Daytona 500 compound. Walking around getting gospel tracks out. I mean, my ministry has stretched from Connecticut, skipping over the, the, the Atlantic Coast State, and into Florida. Now, with these videos... And with the uh, SoundCloud audio, I have never been to a place in Indonesia. And I might be very roughly be able to pinpoint it now where it is on the globe. If you gave me a globe and say, where's Indonesia? I might be able to find it. But many of these audio files that I am doing with you right now are over there in Indonesia. There's someone in California listening to these audio files. Well, I've only been to California once. I'm going to say I've never been there. I've been to San Diego once for two months, three months maybe. Never witnessed. I've been in Virginia, maybe left gospel tracks in the, in the bathrooms off the highway. But there's somebody in Virginia that listens. There are people in Afghanistan, there are people in Egypt, there are people all over the world that are listening to these videos, listening to these audio files, and I have not left my house or my city. And all it took one day for God to say, go out there and open up your big fat mouth and preach the gospel. And me and God had it out for about an hour. I won't get into that story. But as soon as I open up my mouth, John 3, 16, and oh, the ministries that God has given me. And God can give you the same thing too. Now, I'm not saying you may go way over on the other side of the world through the internet. Have you ever witnessed to your neighbors? Put bumper stickers on your car. Witness the people behind you in traffic. It does work. Bumper stickers work. Leave a gospel check on doorknobs in your house. Neighbor, excuse me. Knock on the doors, your neighbor. Say, hi, how you doing? You know, we never met. I'm such and such. This is such and such. My wife and my children. Hey, listen, you may be busy. I know, but I got this gospel track about Jesus Christ. I like to give it to you. You can read on your free time. If you ever need prayer, you ever need something, my house is right over there. Cashier gives you a receipt. Do you give her a gospel trap? 
You don't need to speak. There's a long line. They say, here, I'd like to give you this and have a good day. Your bills. Now, most of the time, your bills are not going to be mailed to a place that's in your city. It's going to be a major city in your state or even somewhere else. Do you put gospel tracts in your bills when you mail them off to pay a check? Now you just sent it out. You don't have to go. Uh, you don't have to scream out on the streets. You don't have to go knocking on someone's door and say, hey, I've been through that, but you can. You ought to. But can't you make a track get the gospel out? It's why it's called a gospel track. And it's as simple as you go use the public bathroom. And you sit down. There's a toilet paper roll. It's got a nice little shelf. Leave a gospel track there. Wash your hands. Do your business. And when somebody else has got business to do and they're just sitting there and they, oh, what's this thing to read? Getting the gospel out there is not complicated, and not complicated. And you make a little step with God and he'll make another step. And before you know it, you look back and it's like, wow. And you may look at Stiley Hayward and say, wow, look at all the things he can do. And yet it started the day after I got saved. I walked up to my father and said, dad, you're going to hell. I had no known knowledge of nothing. I don't know what made me say, but my mouth had to say to my dad, you're lost, you're going to hell. And since 1987, you can figure it out. 32 years, 30 years, something like that. I don't know. Not good with math in my head. I am still telling people they're going to hell on the street who I've never met. And I'm not asking you if this is the first time to go out and do it. And start, give a gospel chat. Go out and find the roughest, toughest person you can find on the sidewalk and say, hey, let me give you, you're going to find out that guy's going to be the sweetest guy. The ones that will give you a hard time is the little old ladies and the children. But take that step of faith with the gospel. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. The world may be your next door neighbor. And don't let it be fooled. There are people, oh, we go on, we go here, we go that, we do this, we do that. And their neighbors are probably going to hell because they, they never told them on their own. Now, Jesus sends us out in Mark 16, 15. Now, look at Luke 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Now, we're, we got another thing. Oh, God, pray for me to go out. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. You'll be amazed what God, how God will spread. Do you realize the disciples started in a place called Jerusalem? And then they went to Samaria. And then you read all the places you can find in Fox's Book of Martyrs. Where those disciples ended up and where they died. Paul left. Jerusalem, angry at Christians, ready to kill them and put them in jail. And you find him, he's all over Europe. He's at Athens. He's at Thessalonica. He's all over here in Rome. And all he did was he got saved. He got baptized. And he went out preaching the gospel. Now, let me tell you something. I started witnessing before. After I got saved and before I was baptized. Get going. How were you when you were saved? Were you willing to go tell somebody? Did you care enough about somebody to say, hey, you know what? You got to do what I just did. And you may say, well, what would you do? Uh, I got saved. <laughs> well, what's that mean? I mean, Jesus watched me. And you may not have all the answers yet. You know, what's a child know when he takes that first step and then the next step and then the next step? In Luke chapter 2 verse 10, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great, 
You know how many people are in the world right now today? Never mind China and India, the entire world population. The harvest is great. There are probably right now a family or a clan, whatever you call them, of nomads in the desert today. You would think, who cares about them? God does. God's not willing that any should perish. Even that, even that little clans of uh, tribal nomads in a vast desert somewhere that no one even knows. God knows them. And God may be sending a man to them right now. There may be at this moment someone who's contemplating in their mind suicide and God may be sending them a Christian with the word. God may be ready to send you somewhere. There's all kinds of fields and it is great. But the laborers are few and that is true. That is true. We've, we got a table set up at the flea market. Gospel track, books, see, whatever you need for help. We have people come, well, we're saved. Okay. Do you pass out gospel track? No, we'll let you do it. Don't let me do it. You do it. Here, here's a fistful. Bathrooms, hand them out to people. Oh, no, no, we'll let you do it. Shame. Shame, 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 shame. It's simple. You don't even have to open your mouth. Gospel tracks are the wonderful, great excitement for you to get out there and tell people about Jesus. Like I said, we're down here in Bikers Week. And there, there's a greater biker time, I, I forget where it's called, Sturgis, somewhere up north, northwest. Now, in Connecticut, we had a bikers event. It was called Pappy's Run. And a group of motorcycles would get together and they would ride their bikes. And we were out there passing out gospel tracks. And you say, oh, bikers? Oh. And then we came down to Florida. We found there was a biker week. We got with the church. We're coming down here. We settled in the hotel one night and woke up the next day and there's just Bikers everywhere. Never, ever seen. And we went out there and we started handing out tracks to bikers. We came back and we did it again the next, the following year. Then we moved down here and we would give out the gospel to bikers. As far as I call, I only had one time where somebody flipped my sign or my hat off. That was it. You can't size people up. And yet, where are those gospel tracts today? Where is the fact that God said, go in all the world and preach the, go the gospel to every creature? And I can tell you, I, listen, I'm promoting gospel tracts. Get started with gospel tracts. If you're just starting, use gospel tracts. Get them. You can get them free. You can pay for comic tracts from Chick. Fellowship Track League. You write to them. They're free. As long as you will use them. I remember one time I was a teenage well, Maybe no, a little older than you, maybe twenties, maybe. And I was driving for a uh, towing company. I, I lived my life on the road, and a truck stop was my mom's house. She let me stay there at nights. You know, there was no else for me to go. But I remember one time I was there. I got up in the morning. She going to work. I started making me breakfast, and I opened up the drawer, and there were all the gospel tracts my grandmother and I have given her. She was keeping them. And many, many years later, my mom got saved. How's that? And a way that she can do, she's witnessing. I promote gospel track. King James Bible believing gospel track. They can say something if you can't. And they can give into a person where you're not. Like I said, a bathroom. You get up and go, someone else will come in. How many times I end up in the garbage? You don't know. In John 10, 15. I mean, excuse me, not John 10, 15. Luke 10, 2. Therefore the Lord had harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. 
What about the what about the people in Africa? Are you praying that God sends missionary there? And not just you others? It's not about you again. All right, you make God use me. Here I am. A small place, me, Daytona Beach. But Lord, there are people in Poland. Lord, there are people in Israel. Lord, there are people in the Congo. Lord, there are people in Sierra Leone. Lord, there are people in Mexico. Lord, there are people in the United States that do not know Jesus. Lord, I don't even have enough resources or time. There are people in Ormond Beach. Lord, send somebody. Foul up these churches that are bad and wicked and for the devil in the world. Lord, we need somebody. And when you go out there and you find out that somebody else is out there, and it's like, thank you, Lord. We went to the beach one time. My wife put her feet in the water like she enjoys and that. We're just sitting there watching. And here comes this guy just walking down the beach. And what's he doing? He's passing out gospel tracts. And then, here you go. Just want to stop you about Jesus? Want to stop you? Look at Jesus. Just stop. And just went all the way down the beach. And Lord, it's a long beach. Amen. Glory to God for that gentleman. I pray for that man often as I think about him. And he doesn't, he just said, here, I'd like to give you something about Jesus Christ or whatever he said. That prayer for that part of the ministry is where I can't be. And God says, okay, I'll send somebody else. The harvest is great and the laborers are few is a very true statement of Jesus Christ. As much as depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. There are many Christians that don't do what God's told them to do. And they will sit there, back to Romans 10, and they will sit there, I'd like to know what the will of God is in my life. Go preach the gospel. What fun, what great time it is. You'll never have a greater ever time if you do of, of getting the gospel out. My family and I rejoice when we get everything in the car and we're packing up or on our way. Do you see this guy? Do you see how this person reacted? What about that guy? That guy was watching you. That guy was taking pictures of you. They were listening. They weren't listening. Oh, how come they won't get saved? Oh, what a great time we had. It was hot. And I got sunburned. But it was worth it. Back to Romans 10, 15. As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. God loves the feet of people who care and carry the gospel to other people in the world. Your feet may smell, they may look ugly, you may have that, that fungi and stuff like that, but if you carry the gospel, God says, I love them feet. I know a gentleman here in Daytona Beach, man, he, he's got bad diabetic problems with his feet. And we met him at the date. No, we met him at Ocean Walk, and then we we, we met him at the at one of the Daytona 500s with bad feet, sore feet, passing out the gospel track, holding a sign for Jesus. God loves them feet. They may hurt. They may give him a hard time. As much as my feet give me hard times and problems with diabetes and neuropathy, God says I love them feet. I love them stinking feet better than a foot that goes and gets to. The little guy that cleans them and shapes them and, and gives them a color. Those are awful feet. They don't carry the gospel. They smell. In Luke 8, 5, the sower went out to sow the seed. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside and was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. Sometimes they're going to be feet. They're going to walk over the seed. God already told you. Not everybody's going to get saved. I believe we've already discussed that. But your feet to be out there. Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace, and bring good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. You know, I never climbed a mountain in my life. And again, there are people like worse off than me. My feet hurt when I preach the gospel. I've got to carry a stool. Every once in a while, i got to sit and rest my feet. And I even had people, oh, I stand up and preach. God says with that pain and agony, it could be just like trying to climb a mountain. You may be sore, but yet you still do it. 
And I love them feet. Those are beautiful feet. Hard-working feet. And the gospel of peace. Peace to a man that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Isaiah says, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. How can the wicked get peace? By putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. How are they going to know? You, as a Christian, has to bring it to them. Bring glad tidings of good things. Glad tidings. Glad means good. Tidings means news. Gospel means good news. Gospel. Good news. Glad tidings. Good news. Gospel. That's what you're to carry. You're not to carry your, your sports team. You're not to carry your church. You're to carry the gospel. You carry anything else but the gospel. Going all the world and preach the gospel is anything but the gospel. God, says, God doesn't approve. I'm sorry. Oh, we sent flowers. Out, uh, you know, come to our church. We're having... God does not approve of that. That is not the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the God. Oh, we got pretty piece of the paper with a church address, map, and the picture of our church, and the times and kinds, and who our pastor, and how great we want you there. That's not the gospel. Now, many people may disagree. Many people may hate me for that statement. Going all the world, preach the gospel. Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. And then, no, maybe we should. Yeah, we'll move to sixteen. I think we're going to stop right there. I think we'll take a little break there. I think I'm not in a rush. And it's the gospel. It's only the gospel, and nothing else. Nothing else. to do next week. We born again Bible believing Christians must go to where the people are not going to go. They're not going to go to church. We must go to them because they're not going to come to you. I want to say wherever you meet. Let's say, okay, you're going to go walk down the sidewalk. There are busy stores. Okay. This is what you want to do. What you're going to do, you're just going to hand out, you're going to spend an hour, hour and a half passing out gospel text. So that's what you want to do. All right. There may be you walking on the street. There may be a man coming out of the shoe store, bought brand new shoes. He doesn't have anything idea about God. He doesn't care about God. He has no rights with God. And he's just bought his brand new shoes. He's got something coming up. That's what's on his mind. He doesn't care. And God's told you go in all the world and preach the gospel. And you hand him a gospel track. And he receives it. Now he has opportunity to read it. And if he were to read it, and now he has opportunity to know about Jesus Christ. And knowing about Jesus Christ, now he has opportunity to get saved. Now what if you never walked on that sidewalk, you never met that guy coming out of the shoe store? He would just go on with his life. We must be born again. That is the essence of being saved. Only by Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That's salvation. Jesus also said, 
Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, that's not a must. You don't have to. I mean, it's the command. And I'm not ordering you, and God's not ordering you. I'm advising you. Jesus is advising you. The most proper thing for you to do is go to someone else and tell them what you got. I mean, wouldn't a woman that just got a ring from her fiance and she's she's now engaged to be married? Oh, look at my ring! Look at my ring! Look how great my ring is! See the ring he bought me? Yeah, you can't go out there see Jesus. See what Jesus done for me. See how wonderful Jesus. See how great he is. But oh, if your if your football team won the pennant or whatever it is, oh, we're great. Oh, look at that. Look at the plays he made that guy through all these miles, and they ran these things, and they beat their butt. Yeah, rah rah rah. So what? And you can't mention Jesus. Oh, look at my car, how great my car is. Hey, man, look how fast it is. Look at the warranty. Look how many payments I got. And what about Jesus? What about Jesus? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And that's a command when yet it's an option. Now, if you choose not to do it, you're not going to be rewarded. And if you do do it, oh, the blessings that will follow. And the blessings that will be carried over into glory. Imagine if someone is in heaven today, right now, or will go to heaven when they die or rapture. And you had part in it. Whether you are the seed planter or the water, you help a soul go to heaven. Now, how wonderful do you think that will be? And yet, a man standing before God at the great white throne judgment. I never heard, I never knew. And God called you up and say, okay, did you meet this gentleman? Yeah, I did. Did you talk to him? Did you show him an open Bible? Did you give him a gospel track? Did you witness to this man? Yeah, I did. And you have left that guy without excuse. God is pleased with you, but he's not pleased with the man that rejected you. The will of God and to be pleasing in God, I advise you to go out with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You take interest in Jesus, you'll see what the interest that God will put back in you.